Give me that green light, man. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, man. This episode of Greenlight Maine's College Edition is brought to you by Maine Department of Economic and Community Development. Good morning. Welcome to the College Edition of Greenlight Maine. I'm your host, Julene Gervais. We have a very savvy group of students from only Maine colleges and universities. This program is about keeping young people and business in Maine. That's right. It's about not letting them get away. The winner of this competition receives $25,000. It could be the University of New England or Thomas College. Both schools are represented for the first time on Greenlight Maine, and we're happy to have them. Before we meet them, let's talk to our judges, who we're so happy to have for the entire series. And let's get to know you a little bit. Martha Bentley from DECD, tell us, where did you go to school? I went to college at Davidson College in Davidson, North Carolina. Is that where you grew up? Um, nope, grew up in Georgia. Nice, okay, Skip Bates, you're up. I grew up here in Maine, uh, went to high school at Moranica in Reedfield. Um, then I was out of the state for about 10 years. I went to Amherst College in Massachusetts, and then I got a master's degree from a school in Japan, uh, but eventually realized that Maine was where my heart was and wanted to live and work, and this is a great place to be. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. And finally, Lynn Melichek from Darlings. How about you? Yeah, I grew up here in Maine, and I uh, went to Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. All right. Well, we're going to talk to you in just a little bit, but it's time to introduce our first contestant of the day from the University of New England. Welcome, Jillian Robillard from Green Bait. And everybody's waiting to hear about your company, Green Bait, because it has everything to do with aquaculture. So whenever you're ready, go for it. Yeah. So my name is Jillian Robillard. Uh, my father is a lobsterman. I've been in the fishing industry my whole life. Uh, two years ago, I started my own company called Southern Maine Crabs, where I go to the local boats and I buy Jonah crabs and sell them wholesale. From there, I decided that I wanted to help out the industry more, um, and from this came my idea of green bait. So what I do is I use the invasive green crab species as a bait source for lobstermen. Um, so in doing that, we take the green crabs and we put it through a proprietary process and then put it right in the trap. Um, so our, our idea behind this is to keep the prices lower than the standard bait price, um, to keep the competitive edge and to keep it more efficient for the lobstermen. Um, so my solution is that green bait is a cheaper, environmentally friendly bait alternative. Um, and not only will it create dozens of jobs, but it'll save thousands in the state of Maine. Uh, so our minimum viable product, um, we would like to distribute to the greater Southern Maine area. Um, we would like to keep it the main fishery with significant growth potential. Um, our total addressable market is $1.08 million. We found this by calculating how many drums, uh, at the price per drum of lobster bait um, and how many lobstermen there would be using it. Um, from there, we would expect to sell to multiple lobstermen multiple times a week, um, thus creating our profit. Uh, for marketing, I would like to market to the lobstermen directly to begin with, um, bring it to the attention of the Maine Lobstermen's Association, and from there, I would like to start selling to bait distributors who would sell it to the smaller companies, eventually getting down to the boats, keeping the same retail price so that it's more efficient for the lobstermen. I would like to be able to provide an incentive to the lobstermen so if they sell me their green crabs, I will sell them my bait for a cheaper price than someone else. Um, kind of keep the flow there, keep it even with everyone. And then uh, our competitive edge. So green bait will retail for about 45 cents a pound where other standard bait prices right now, like redfish is about 52 to 55 cents a pound. And that's one of the cheaper forms of bait. So it's only gonna go up from here as quotas cut back. So for future expansion, um, we would package them in two pound packages and it's gonna be a simple design that's gonna be fished in the standard size bait bags. From there, um, the retail prices are gonna re remain pretty stable because it's an invasive species. There's plenty of them out there, so it's not, you know, it's not gonna dwindle down at all. Um, and if we can get the population lower, that would be fantastic for the state of Maine, for the industries here. We would like to scale green crabs uh, in processing capacity, and ultimately we would like to expand the market um, to potential down east Maine and northern Maine, um, eventually expanding into 
New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and possibly even across the border into Canada. Uh, so the process I use, it's a proprietary process. Um, it's a little bit of a trade secret right now, so it just starts off with the green crabs. We process them to get any sort of parasites out, and then those go straight into the standard uh, bait bags that can be fished by the lobstermen. So, thank you. Way to go. All right, Jillian. Let's kick it off with you, Lynn. So I'm not super knowledgeable about bait in general, but I would just wonder, is there anything that attract, are the lobsters more attracted to your crab or I mean, the like, Is it tasty? Yeah. Like, do they like it? <laughs> do they like it? Well, they Does it, it make them want to go to one uh, lobster pot over the other, I guess? So. Yeah, so lobsters are naturally attracted to an oily scent in the water, because um, that, you know, it kind of stays together in the water and it spreads out. Um, so in my proprietary process, I do add other um, animal byproducts to make that oily scent. Um, in a test that I ran, it did catch just as many lobsters as the standard bait. Um, I would like to beef that up a little bit more so you can catch more, but that's going to come in time. I don't want to know what the other oily substance, like the hot dog, <laughs> so... Perfect, because I can't say. <laughs> So I, I love this because, you know, you talk about natural resource. This, this is a, uh, you know, as you say, an invasive species that doesn't have a, a use. So uh, you're paying, but I want to make sure I understand, are you paying the lobstermen to sell you their green crabs? Or couldn't you just, you know, get some legislation passed and get some help from DECD or something to, uh, you know, make it a requirement that they have to, like, dispose of it in some kind of way that would lower your cost of goods sold? Yeah, so right now um, the lobstermen aren't supposed to throw them back in the water if they catch them anyways. Yeah. Um, so they just end up killing them. So I figured if they're going to kill them, why not put them to a better use? Yeah. Um, and I would like to keep it so that I buy it from them so that way they're getting compensated for their work. Because um, they already, like I said, can't throw it back in the water. So they have to deal with them one way. So why not get paid for them? Yes, it is. Sure. Yeah, I really love that sort of circular economy concept where you're getting the the raw product from the lobstermen and then you're selling back a value added product which is really a, you know what we want to do with our natural resources so my question is around sort of the um, are there like what are the opportunities around um, how many crabs there are out there I mean if if you know if you had as many customers as you would ever want can you do you have enough crabs to supply Absolutely, yeah. So the green crabs have a very high reproduction rate. Um, so one brooding female can lay as much as 150,000 eggs in one shot, and they can do that twice a year. Um, and I'm not sure if you've seen the size of them, but they can grow very rapidly, molting every single year. So I don't expect to be any short on green crabs in the near future. And you've tested this. Correct. What's the kind of feedback you get from the lobstermen? Um, everyone seems to think that it's a really good idea and they would like to start using it. Um, as we know, the government and the fishermen don't always see eye to eye, but this is definitely one thing that they can see because it'll help their industry and their, their livelihoods. Awesome, simply awesome. Well, great job, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. We need to take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna hear from another company, so don't go away. Whether you're a small business or a big business, whether you're cutting edge or looking at a traditional industry in a whole new way, whether you're on the coast, in the city, a small town, wherever. If you're an organization here in Maine, if you want to innovate, and if you want to grow, we want to support you. We're the Maine Technology Institute. MTI is a proud sponsor of Greenlight Maine. Located off I-95 in Oakland, First Park is known as Central Maine's most connected business park. It features high-speed fiber internet, three-phase power, and is located in a foreign trade zone, connecting your business to a world of opportunity. With shovel-ready pre-permitted sites and only a short distance to the local airport and rail service, First Park also makes it easy for entrepreneurs, innovators, and businesses to distribute or receive products around the globe. Interested in locating your business to First Park? Get an exclusive offer at firstpark.com gift. At Sutherland Weston, it's not just about being persuasive, it's about being prepared. Too many agencies get excited about how to gain attention, but not what happens next. We know what happens next is really the important part. That's why we've had 15 years of continuous growth as a responsive, problem-solving, creative partner. One who's not afraid of accountability, responsibility, or what happens next. Looking for a creative, strategic partner? Let's talk. 
Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. Our Sunday morning conversation is at the beautiful Cumberland Club, and we are so fortunate to have Senator Angus King with us. Thank you so much for being here. Wonderful to be here on a beautiful day. Absolutely. You have done so many tremendous things for entrepreneurship in Maine. So let's talk about it. Well, entrepreneurship is the key to everything. People talk about tax incentives and local, you know, TIFs and all that kind of thing. The key to economic development is people with ideas. And Maine is a great place for people with ideas. And that's something that I'm talking about all over the state. I was so interested in your speech that I listened to last fall at the MTI 20th anniversary. You helped found that. You also got behind Maine and Company. People don't always remember how much that your legacy has done for the state. And now that you're here for this college series, it's just wonderful to have your support. Well, I'm, I'm excited because there's this sea of talent in Maine called college students. Lots of them have ideas. Lots of them have business ideas. And you know, we're in a new world today that's really fundamentally different than a generation ago, where you can work where you live instead of having to live where you work. You can make your own work environment. And I know people all over Maine that are doing amazing things, engineers that are working in California, soft, from here, by the way, software people telecommuting to Boise, uh, Boston, all over the country. And also, there are these cool businesses starting in Maine. I started my own business. Uh, in 1989, I started an energy conservation business. It was nothing but an idea. Uh, I borrowed more money. If, I'd, if my father had known about it, he'd roll over in his grave. <laughs> but it worked. And uh, ideas and entrepreneurship are the heart of economic development. And Maine's a great place to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you mentioned this whole remote workforce. And Maine is has a tremendous opportunity to get behind that and really market to people. So well, the, the missing piece, though, is universal broadband. Uh, we've got gaps in Maine in the rural areas, and that's one of my priorities in Washington, is broadband nationwide, and particularly in rural areas. We actually have a Senate broadband caucus for rural areas. And so that's one of the pieces. But boy, once we get that licked, we've got it made. Why would you go anywhere else when you can live here and make a good living and create a business? Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So tell us, what is your favorite thing to see when you're home in Maine? Well, I like to see the whole state. Mary and I are really excited because we're going to pick up a new RV this spring. Awesome. And uh, we're going to be all over Maine. We always go to the Blues Festival in the RV in July. We go to state parks. I mean, you could throw a dart at Maine and find cool stuff to do, nice people, and beautiful sights. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. And there's so much more Greenline Maine coming at you, but first, let's hear a word from our sponsor. We'll be right back. Furniture for Greenlight Maine is provided by Thomas Mosier Furniture, handmade American furniture since 1972. Reaching new customers online is hard. You've tried Facebook, Google Ads, email. You even built a website 10 years ago. You're way too busy to focus on digital marketing, and you're not getting results. At Dream Local Digital, that's what we do. We've helped businesses nationwide grow with online marketing. We're the experts. Let us help you. We're very proud of the product we make and the way that we make it. The most important features of our original dog vest are in its design. Traditional lenders, you know, they steer away from unproven track records. Can you come? Hold up. CEI gave us the opportunity to build a track record, show that our future path will be more solid than our past. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. We have Thomas College on hand. Welcome, Dylan Veyu. You are everywhere. I saw you on the news recently. Yes, yes. Very awesome opportunity. It was really nice to be on there. To talk about your company, Tree Free Heat. Very yes, cool. Thank you. Okay, whenever you're ready, go for it. Awesome. Thank you. Hello, judges. Thank you for having me. My name is Dylan Veyu, and as of June of last year, I started my company, Tree Free Heat. Tree Free Heat converts unused hemp stalks into bio bricks and fire starters to reduce the reliance of fossil fuels and wood energy in Maine. 
I have garnered partners, and my partners include Wild Folk Farm in Benton, a small hemp farm, as well as Wooden Sons in Sanford, a wood pellet manufacturer. With the help of my partners, I will be able to scale my bio brick and fire starters all across Maine. So you might be asking, why hemp? Well, after three months of research and development and testing my product to wood bio bricks, I've discovered that hemp burns as efficiently as wood in both duration and heat. In addition, hemp grows significantly faster than trees. Where it takes timber about 50 years to grow to maturity, hemp grows in just four months. A significant difference. Lastly, there's a lot of hemp in Maine. You can't drive down a back road nowadays without seeing multiple hemp farms. As of last year, there was well over a million hemp stalks that were either thrown away, composted, or burned, completely wasted. And this year, it will only get worse. There's nowhere better for tree for heat to grow than right here in Maine. Maine cares deeply about agricultural industries. Maine has been and will continue to be a hub for sustainability. And Maine's startup community is always welcoming, helpful, and inspiring. Tree Free Heat will not be leaving Maine, and this is where we will flourish. Currently, I only sell fire starters. To do my bio bricks, it requires really expensive equipment and a distribution system that I do not have. However, my fire starters can be made in my house and shipped through the mail. I wanted to find out who the perfect customer is, so I started talking to hundreds and hundreds of Mainers. What I found out is my perfect customer is an outdoor venturer, a hiker, a camper, a lodger. And what they want is just an easy to use, durable and affordable product to start their fires. With that in mind, I created my fire starters to be easy to use, durable, renewable, and affordable. My fire starters last for 30 minutes. That's allotting plenty of time for the user to make their fire. So how would 25,000 help tree free heat? Well, it would help tremendously. My fire starters are growing in popularity and my customers are raving about the product. Recently, Henry Gilbert of Back 40, fellow Greenlight Maine participant reached out to me and said that he would like to put my product onto his website. In order to maintain all of this demand, I will need to hire a part-time employee right here in Maine to help create and ship out my products. I would also like to start scaling my biopic process and maybe create a beta-tested uh, market entry this year. This is an incredibly important problem to me. We cannot let another year go by with all of these hemp stocks being literally burned no different than money being burned. I would like to see a future in which I can be able to turn the hemp into a liquid biofuel so that we can use it for a way for uh, fueling our transportation as well as our homes. I would like to thank you for having me on the show today. My name is Dylan Veyu of Tree Free Heat. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Another outstanding company solving a problem. Skip, let's start with you. Sure. Uh, You've got uh, some great props up there. And if if I could just ask you to sort of explain the difference between the two products. And then at the very last minute, you talked a little bit about liquid biofuels. So tell us more about the product. Yes. So it's a a stepladder kind of movement. So the fire starters, something I can do in my house. So that's just something to start getting the capital and my name out there. The next step is these bio bricks. Where you use bio bricks is in wood stoves as opposed to actual corded wood. People often don't like using corded wood because it's messy and it requires a lot of work to get into your basement. Uh, You sell these in pallets and they can get shipped straight to your house. Uh, So then the following step after the bio bricks would be then hemp pellets, which uh, self-explanatory. And then the last one and the most ideal result is hemp liquid fuel, which I would love to use for public transportation. Sweet. Okay, Martha. Tell us a little bit about sales with your uh, first product. Yeah, so I started a very soft launch on November 1st. Um, I just created my website and I was like, I want people to see this and I just want people to buy some. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of marketing towards it yet because we've been busy with a lot of different PR things I've been up to. Um, However, I've sold 35 uh, starting on November 1st. Most of them have been, uh, I'd say a third of them friends and family, and then the rest of them are just strangers. So about 66% is uh, strangers, which is just really encouraging because I'm getting sales from Pennsylvania, northern parts of Maine, from people I don't even know, uh, and s- sort of stuff like that. Awesome. So. Lynn. Um, I really, I have used some fire starters before in the past, and I really like the shape and everything of the one that you have right now. I think it's very convenient and easy to pack, but I don't find the packaging as easy to pack. Have you considered making it more 
travel friendly for those that are, are going out hiking and camping? Yes, uh, I would love to make it as small as possible, specifically for hikers, um, specifically even more for through hikers who seem to be most interested in this product. People that are, you know, maybe traveling along the Appalachian Trail. Uh, the only problem is I'm broke and this is on Amazon Prime <laughs> and I can get it in two days. So eventually I would love to do that, but for right now this will have to suffice. I think we have time for one last question. Well, I was thinking about the distribution. So you just said Amazon Prime, but do you expect to sell this through a website or have you thought about teaming up with, uh, you know, an outdoor sporting goods company? We need yes. a real short answer. Uh, yes, uh, eventually I would love to. I just have it on my website, but I'm trying to get it onto Amazon Prime as well and any other outlet that I can find. Great job. We need to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more. Don't go away. Broadcast facilities are provided by Hassan University's Nescom, the New England School of Communication. You know, I believe in business today there are too many experts and not enough expertise. I think there are too many promises and not enough follow-through. Those things used to be the norm, but now they're the exception. At Sutherland Weston, we work hard every day to be that exception. We've had 15 years of continuous growth and I'm proud of that. I think if your business is looking for a creative, responsive, problem-solving partner, if you're looking for the exception, I think we should talk. We're honored to be Greenlight Maine CPA firm sponsor. Maine is home to a range of businesses from startups that you might see on this program to closely held businesses and organizations that operate internationally. ARB's advisors are providing savvy solutions to complex issues for sophisticated and growing businesses of any size across Maine and throughout New England. And we're doing it the way you want Mainers to, guided by our local, sensible values. Albin, Randall, and Bennett is a proud sponsor of Greenlight Maine. Maya Angelou said that people will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. The way your customers feel about doing business with you is the essence of your brand. Your brand resides in the hearts and the minds of your customers. That's today's Marketing Minute from the PR Maven. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. This is the part of the show we all wait for. Our viewers at home want to know what you think. I mean. This is a tough call. Uh, both of these businesses uh, have lots of promise. And, and the puns, you know, are just, you know, ready at hand. You got to be stoked about tree-free heat, but you wouldn't want to make the wrong you know, call and get trapped um, uh, when thinking about green bait. So, you know, <laughs> what do you what do you think? I, I'm, I'm stuck uh, on this. That's one. pretty good. Um, I have to say, they're both solving problems that I didn't know existed. So I think that's fabulous. Um, Maine is known for wood, and it's known for lobster. So I mean, definitely green bait is solving is, a, like is protecting is protecting what we know. Um, and with the sustainability of hemp that's going on right now, I didn't know they were just burning the stocks, and so great information. Uh, it's, it's a hard choice. They, these college students are very impressive. Mm -hmm. Most impressive, absolutely. I just couldn't believe Jillian said she was born, and they went right down to the lobster boat. She grew up, you know, her father lobstering. She knows his business just as best as the next person. So, and then, of course, you know, Dylan's been working on this a long time, too. Right. Yeah, I really liked, um, uh, Jillian's, you know, the fact that she's done a fair amount of research and development, sort of figuring out what, how she can treat the crabs and get them back out there um, in a useful way, and I thought that was really helpful. Um, I really thought she also, in a little way, sort of uh, undersold some of the opportunities. I think she really has an opportunity to, you know, dare we say, uh, completely displace herring as a bait for lobstermen in Maine, and that would be amazing. It's interesting to contrast these companies to some of the other companies that we've seen from a scalability perspective. These companies don't rely on technology per se, so they don't have quite the national or international scalability that some other companies might. Um, but when you start thinking about feasibility, these guys have product that's ready at hand or natural resources that are ready at hand and an identifiable market. If I was gonna choose between the two of these, I think I would lean towards green bait right now. If 
well, really because of Jillian's experience, she's been a lobster per woman for years already. She's grown up in the industry. She knows the players. She has another business already. So from a character standpoint, she's got a lot of business savvy and experience that she can rely on. And this is a promising idea. And both of them are going to stay in Maine, though. They're that's what's yep. the beauty of, of these both of these um, contestants. This, I mean, they fit like iconically what we are striving for with Greenlight Maine. Yeah, and I like the fact that Dylan has really taken advantage of all of the resources that are out there. The, he did an accelerator this summer in Waterville at a co-working space, and he really has caught that entrepreneurial bug, which we really want to see happen here. So I think that's terrific. If he can make that even grow more towards the the bricks, more from the starter, I think that's going to be. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and as we say, if you know whoever does not win today, they still might have an opportunity to make it to the finals. So it might not be over because I know it's hard for you guys to make that choice sometimes, especially in this case. I think both of them do have you know some work to do. Dylan has some work to do around his sales channel, sort of figuring out how he might best. Um, you know, market and sell his products and get them out there. And I think Jillian also is figuring out how she'll be able to scale. So, um, so they both have work to do. Yeah, absolutely. Great job. Okay. We are going to take a short break and hear from our sponsors. But when we come back, find out who the winner is. We'll be right back. Reaching new customers online is hard. You've tried Facebook, Google Ads, email. You even built a website 10 years ago. You're way too busy to focus on digital marketing and you're not getting results. At Dream Local Digital, that's what we do. We've helped businesses nationwide grow with online marketing. We're the experts, let us help you. I truly believe that if you're gonna do something better, you gotta start by innovating. Think about how to solve for a customer problem in a way that's quicker, different, and more customer-centric. The bank's promise has been fundamentally the same from the beginning till now, and that's ensuring that all that we do is making the lives of our employees, our customers, and the communities better. And it's their better, not what's defined as our better. Welcome back. Both UNE and Thomas College showed up big time showing off Heritage Industries in Maine. Unfortunately, only one can win today's round. Judges, who's it going to be? That means Greenbait is today's winner of this round, and congratulations to Dillian. She is moving on in the competition. That's all the time we have for today. We thank you for your feedback. Please check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And you can see us right back here next week after Meet the Press on New Center, Maine. Have a fantastic Sunday. Congratulations. Great job. Come on over. This episode of Greenlight Maine's College Edition has been brought to you by Maine Department of Economic and Community Development. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Greenlight Maine has been a paid-for presentation by the Portland Media Group.